You're listening to Pole Parlor, a fun, inspiring podcast for all those bewitched by pole dance. Each week, your Madam Crimson Minx has candid conversation with unique, engaging individuals from within and around the pole dance community. Pole Parlor is passionate about preaching creativity, soulful sensuality, and empowerment through pole dance. You know how we do. Welcome everyone to Pole Parlor. This is episode 51, Lindsay Dement. I'm your host, Crimson Minx. This week on the podcast, we have a pole babe from my newly adopted hometown of Austin, Texas, Lindsay Dement. On this episode, we have a good old time talking about why Lindsay chose to stay local rather than internationally tour as a pole professional, how she manages to keep her classes full as an instructor, how she found her sexy by owning her own personal style, and we get the lowdown on how Lindsay went from stalking to working for Cleo the Hurricane at Cleo's Rock and Pole. Check out Lindsay's post-podcast interview on the blog at poleparlor.com where she shares her favorite photos, music, video, and more. And while you're there, check out the freshly stocked Pole Parlor shop where you can find some fun and sometimes inappropriate pole wear. And now, let's bring on Lindsay. Welcome, Lindsay Dement, to the Pole Parlor Hi. Podcast. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Thanks for agreeing to chat with us today. Of course, any time I was hoping that you would ask me to do this, and I totally <laughs> didn't want to like, hey, Crimson, do you need anybody to interview anytime soon? Oh, girl, I told you the first time I met you, I was already scheming to have you on, so I'm glad we finally got to plan it. Yay, me too. <laughs> awesome. So let's start with the same question I ask everyone. For how long have you been pole dancing and how did you first discover pole? I have been pole dancing since like the end of 2010. And um, I was sitting at home one night on my couch by myself. And I was just kind of you know, scrolling through the internet as you do. And I saw a video of Felix Kane, which I'm sure like, That's like everyone's so, answer, Felix I, Kane. No, well, on I YouTube. mean, like, <laughs> exactly. Right. So I'm one of like many, many, many of people <laughs> who that was like their first, like, holy shit, this is awesome. And I want to do it. So I wasn't doing anything um, like active in my life. I was a hairstylist and just kind of like, you know, went to work, came home and that was pretty much it. And so, um, yeah, I saw that video and then I got online to like, oh shit, where can I do classes close to me in Austin? And so I found a Groupon. And so I'm That's like, the you know, other thing everyone always says, Groupon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, I took my first class. I was terrible. I couldn't pick, like, I couldn't do anything. I would just slip to the ground. But even though I was slipping to the ground, I was having the best time. And so then I went to every single class that I would, even classes I weren't, wasn't supposed to go to. I was going to, they're like, um, this is an advanced class and you've taken two classes. (laughs) You're the reason that they have like the levels now that you have to test into. Yeah. All your fault. (laughs) <laughs> that was me. <laughs> totally. But even just like, I'm like, well, can I just sit in? And they're like, okay, weirdo. <laughs> Creep, don't get on that pole. <laughs> yeah, right. There's the chick heavy breathing in the corner. <laughs> Wait, do you have an athletic background then of some sort or a dance background or gymnastics? Okay. What, what's that? Yeah. I did dance when I was younger. It wasn't anything like, you know, dance mom type of thing. I wasn't doing it like competitively. I was just kind of, you know, doing it for fun. And I did cheerleading. I was really into, um, I was really into softball for a long time. Yeah, I was the pitcher of my softball team. So I got started with my pole guns early. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So you had some athleticism in you and some some dance in you a bit when, when you start it. Yeah. I was all like, when I was a kid, I was always doing something. I think it's cause I just had so much energy and my mom was like, do something with this, please. <laughs> but before, um, I picked up pole, it was a good, you know, four or five years since I've done anything dance related. So it was nice being able to tap back into my roots a little bit. 
Yeah. And so you've gone on and you've started participating in a lot of um, shows and competitions and things like that. What was that journey like for you? Like, did you, when you started, were you like, oh, this is going to be my thing? Or did you kind of like slowly introduce to that? Um, I kind of just jumped in like balls to the wall okay. to it. Like, um, back, I feel like I keep saying like back then, back in my day, <laughs> but I mean, like, even though it was just a few short years ago, pole has come, you know, such Seven a long years way in poll years. is like a long time. It, exactly. Um, what is it for like, like dog years? Isn't that like every seven years to yes. one year? I feel like that's pretty similar. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Pull your dog years. Yeah. <laughs> Cause so you're like, you know, 49 in, in, in pull years. Yeah. <laughs> right. Been for seven years. So I'm you're an old like, lady. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, like then I would do any show I could at any bar, any restaurant, any street corner. Like if I had the opportunity to be on a pole, don't pay me. That's fine. Like whatever. I don't care. I just want to do it because I love it. It wasn't like, I don't know. I just wanted to do it. And then, so I actually started competing first and then started doing all those shows because like I said, there wasn't really anything around. So Miss Texas Pole Star was kind of like the big, I mean, not kind of, it was the big competition, you know, in Texas. And so that was doing that competition was my first time on stage. And then coming off of it, like I blacked out. I don't remember my performance <laughs> at all. I haven't seen a video of it to this day. Really? Yes. You're but good. I just knew when I got off, I'm like, okay, I want to do that again. So then that's why I'm like, you want me to a little redhead to come pole dance at your bar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you did go-go dancing, you said, right? I did, Was yeah. That after you started polling, so you were starting to look for opportunities? Okay. Yeah, so, um, like, I did Miss Texas Pole Star in 2011, and then after that, um, I started go-go dancing, and I actually go-go danced with Bryn Root. In no that way! Was, Is that how you... Um, <laughs> it was some of the most fun times I've ever had and it was just it was just so much fun because it would it helped me a lot with pole you know getting especially just getting out in front of people and just doing it you know what I mean just being in front of people dancing um and it really helped me a lot with like a lot of the off the pole stuff Mm -hmm. like a lot of floor work and just feeling comfortable and confident like dancing with out the pole because I feel like a lot of times when you have that there you just kind of you know rely on it and hold on to it you know either with one hand two hands trying to you know and that (laughs) really helped me just kind of like get out there bitch do it (laughs) there's other people around here I guess I can do something for them too yeah maybe that's a good little trick like if you're trying to get more comfortable with some stage presence like do some go-go dancing and Exactly. It's not like I feel like, especially, you know, um, this is not to like throw shade at, at the, the level of expertise at go-go dancing, but like no. if it's at a bar or something like that, it's not like people are expecting you to be like ace level dance. Like it's kind of just a way for you to have some fun and, and yeah. get paid and get used to an audience and work, yeah, work on those off pulse skills. Yeah. And talk about four hours of cardio. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been exhausting exhausting but I miss the body that I had (laughs) (laughs) you sent some pictures for your blog post that people can check out on the website at poleparlor.com and you were cracking me up like my 2012 body (laughs) all you do is work out and freaking out rest in peace yeah well you know some of us like not working out all the time and food and you're still a hot bitch so whatever (laughs) food is delicious and fuck it it is what it is (laughs) yeah sorry I'm saying a lot of bad words I hope my mom doesn't see this and get mad. (laughs) Oh, well, you're saying it with emotion. You're using it to really embellish a story. You're being a storyteller. So I'm passionate, mom. 
Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mom. Thanks for listening. We're so yeah. happy. <laughs> thanks for supporting Lindsay because your family's super supportive of everything, right? Yeah, they're all super cool. My mom and dad are super supportive. Um, they haven't been to a show yet, but they live out of town, so it's a little difficult. And then um, I have a sister who lives here in Austin, and she is a kick-ass yoga instructor. Oh, so, cool. yeah, we've, like, gone back and forth between, like, I take her classes, she kicks my butt, she takes my classes, I kick her butt. Like, wow. <laughs> a little sibling trade-off, but she, like, my family's super cool and love it. So and that helps you get you're sexy flexy because you're super flexible. Your sister, can you give uh, her some credit? Well, my sister, she has a very flexible back. Okay. And she's like the handstand queen ever since she was a kid. Like, I, she would dress up as Willie Nelson and do handstands in our living room. <laughs> We're a weird family. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, but she, I, I'm. She had a shtick. She had a shtick as a kid. And she, it was her theme. It was fun. <laughs> Roll with it. But I love it. I've always been jealous of her handstand skills for sure. Wow, she would do well in the pole community. Does she ever come take classes? Yeah, she has before. She's taken a few of them, and she's just one of those naturally good people that you're like, I kind of hate you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she's great, and she wants to take more. It's just you know finding time and whatnot. Yeah. When you're full time at, with yoga, you know, you can only spread yourself so thin. Yeah. She has kids and stuff too. So it's a handful. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, I think people didn't pick up on it yet. Lindsay's in Austin. She did mention that I'm in Austin. So, um, it's been awesome. I get to take classes with Lindsay. Yeah. I was so, can I tell you the first time you came into my class, I was so nervous because yeah. I'm like, oh my God, Crimson's coming to my class. She's so <laughs> awesome. And she talks to all these cool people. And then you were and- like, oh, she's just like a really basic level two dancer who just talks to cool people. <laughs> not true. Not true at all. You guys, I wish you could see her in class just it- because like the whipping of her hair and she heel clacks better than anybody I've ever met in my life. I hate her to say that, guys. And I paid her. Thank you. Uh, I just <laughs> admire you so much. So thank you for taking classes Oh, that's really sweet of you to say. Now back to you. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, Lindsay's classes here at Austin are always full. Um, It's really impossible to get in. Try as I may. Try as I try to book out months in advance. But I thought that would be a cool thing to talk about because so many instructors listen to this podcast. And what, what makes for a successful teacher? Like, what what's your thing? How are you getting people to constantly be filling up your classes? Any advice? <laughs> Well, th- thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel very fortunate that the Hell on Heels, that's my choreography heels class has mm-hmm. such, it has a following. Yeah. And I feel, I don't know, man, I just try to make my classes fun. Like yeah. I try to crack jokes and I feel like as soon as I can like show my students that I'm not going to judge them, I'm making fart jokes in the back. <laughs> like I feel like that kind of lights that you know, kind of barrier down and they're like, okay, I can be myself in here. You're very comfortable to take classes. (laughs) That's good advice. Like be relatable. Yeah. And I try to make them fun and I try to make them funny. And even though all my jokes don't (laughs) land, (laughs) I I want people to laugh and smile and not just worry about, okay, I have to do a dip on seven and then I have to whip my hair on eight. Like, I don't want it to be like about that. I want you to come in. I want you to have fun. If you want to work on what we're working on and add your own little flair to it. Awesome. If you want to say, no girl, not today. Totally fine. Like I'm not going to, I'm not here to force you to do something. I'm here to help you enhance your day, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I really just try to listen to my students and vibe with them. And I try to take on their feedback and I don't know. I just really want to show everybody that I teach that I care, you know, and not just care about, Oh, I have to teach this class. It's going to be an hour and 15 minutes and then I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I want 
got to be in that headspace, you know, because when a teacher shows up and they are not feeling it, it like is so easy to read that energy and be like, I don't want to be here either. So one thing I want to mention is that you don't, it's not like you are spending all day just like waiting for class and this is your full-time job. You're coming from your full-time job too, Mm -hmm. um, which is worth mentioning. So what do you do? Yeah. Um, for my nine to five, um, I work at a dentist office. I just, just, I do front desk. So I deal a lot with, you know, insurance, all that fun stuff and scheduling and taking care of patients and do all that kind of, you know, jazz. Um, which I re- I actually really, really love it because I get to sit and like talk with people all day and I really love the people that I work with. So that makes life better. But yes. um, I teach on Tuesday nights and I teach on, uh, well, it was Saturday. Now it's Fridays. So I go straight from work, head over to class. And on Tuesdays, I can't wait for it because I know I get to get out of work, go do badass shit with all of my girlfriends and and. and Boyfriends, I'm married, but you know what I mean. Boyfriends, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> homeboys, homeboys, yeah, yeah, homeboys. Um, and just you know, in the day with dancing and pole and a lot of booty popping and hair whipping and all the fun stuff. So it's it's actually working this nine to five has made me love pull more because before I started that, I was teaching between sixteen and twenty classes a week, Stop. and. It was killing me. Like, it was making me, I mean, you know how it is, like anything you do, like, if you want to make a living, yeah, if you want to make a living, and that many, I guess, huh? Exactly. And then just as much as I love pole, it was, I was getting burnt out on it, you know? Yeah, we see this so often that between studio owners or teachers or competitors, like, they are burning out on the pole thing. And yeah. I feel like a lot of your success has to do with like you learned that early on and decided I'm going to not have it be the main focus of my life. Yeah. And I mean, doing pole full time, that's hard to pay the bills, you know, <laughs> without just, you know, hustling till you die, you know, and I yeah. totally admire people that can do that. And I'm jealous that they can do that yeah. because I can't. It's not impossible. Um, it's not impossible. That's for sure. No, but it's not, not the only option. If you, you can still be a pretty, uh, bomb ass professional polar and still have other things going on. Yeah. And I just knew it was the right time in my life for me to kind of settle down and get, well, settle down, but get like a nine to five. But it's made me just love pull more. And it's made me put more passion and more creativity into um, my outline for class or the routines that I choreograph. Because I try to keep my routines not basic, as you know. No, they are not yeah. basic. They're <laughs> super fun. What like inspires your routines and stuff? It has to be the perfect song. Like, okay. I know that sounds kind of like, but it doesn't. Soon, it's super true. Yeah. As soon as I hear a song, I'll be like, okay, that's it. And then I'll kind of like scroll through, you know, some Russian Instagram for some, <laughs> <laughs> for some inspo. And then I'll just go to the studio and kind of whatever comes out, comes out, you know, and it's fun. <laughs> Your classes are really fun. And you teach, um, you know, tricks classes as well. Um, I do. I'm yeah, not high I, enough level to take those, but I'm assuming they're <laughs> awesome as well. <laughs> well, right now I'm just teaching one trick class and that's an advanced level four. So okay. yeah, we're I'll, doing never, I'll never be there, but maybe I'll be that out of breath girl in the corner one day like you used to do and just, just a little. <laughs> Stop no, it. Um, it's. It's okay. I'm very happy where my level I am, but I prefer to take all of the choreo classes. Are you noticing that the choreo is getting more popular and people are requesting it more? Does it still seem to be half and half? No, so many people are requesting it. Um, You and I were actually having a conversation about this and how popular low flow is right now and floor work and dressing in cute leotards and you know knee highs or thigh highs or whatever and just I feel like there's a whole kind of movement right now about just like the actual dance and not just like 
look at all this crazy backflip, one-handed land on my finger type of things, you know. And I, I find more and more people are wanting to just dance, yeah, you what, know. What's up with that? Do we do we credit the Russians with that? What do we think? I don't know, but whoever did it, I I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, were you when you were polling full time? Were you dealing with injuries or anything like that? Um, I mean, my, okay? I feel like my body was always kind of beat up in one way or another. Um, but I, I try to take care of myself as much as I could. Um, yeah. there is an awesome chick in town. She's, um, been my student for a long time. Her name is Renice and she works, I swear on like every pole dancer in town. And <laughs> she has like little like dynamite fingers like so I would get massages from her like once a week or once every two weeks and so that would help a lot but I yeah and I think it's just kind of I I had to listen to my body you know At, at certain points it was just like screaming and kicking and just being like rest lady and so I would have to I would try to rest as much as I could but so we talked about how dance has been getting more popular and yes. your classes, but you've always been really good at that stuff. And we touched on that. You do have the, you know, childhood dance, but it's not like you were dancing sexy as a kid. That would be weird, right? Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> That'd be so weird. So the go-go dancing probably yeah. helped. Um, and we talked about you on the past episode of anyone, um, (laughs) yeah, how embarrassed did that make you when we talked about you back on episode 30, anyone who hasn't listened to it, I had Sydney Claire on from Vancouver and she cited you as like her favorite dancer. And then this is when I used to live in Los Angeles and I joked that I was coming down here and going to like make you be friends with me and, um, (laughs) and Creepy. So A, how creepy was that? B, how embarrassing was that? And C, we were talking about your bringing sexy back video. Yeah. You, you are sexy as hell. Like, how did you get there? Or like, what kind of tips can you give us? What, what makes it what makes a sexy dance since it's like this shit you've been owning lately? <laughs> well, first off, we are friends. So <laughs> that's a win on my part. Sydney, I did it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel honored to be creeped on by you guys. Um, not embarrassed, super (laughs) shocked and super flattered because I have such a lady crush on her. I think she's amazing Mm -hmm. and so pretty and talented and nice. And I'm like, you know who I am? (laughs) So I was funny, a pole star having a crush on another pole star (laughs) and being like, wait, you know me? I know you, you know me. What? (laughs) <laughs> let's talk about each other on several podcasts <laughs> oh, like always talking about how great we think each other yeah. are but never actually her and I just need to get into like the same city yeah, and just I'm already trying to talk her down to Austin so we'll make it happen we'll make it happen and we'll record peer- something yeah peer everyone. pressure <laughs> I'll make them dance together guys <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I'm planning already scheming uh, scheming Um, yeah, not embarrassed, super flattered, super awesome. Um, but yeah, that bringing sexy back video, Mm -hmm. I love that routine to this Mm -hmm. day. I don't know. It was just, I'm putting it in the show notes again. It was just in case anyone missed it, that, that first podcast, I'm putting it in again. Um, so, um, Lucky Martino, if y'all don't know her, look her up. She's a badass. She's Another a great- Austin pole babe. Yep. Yep. Her and I have been, you know, pulling together since the beginning. So we have like this little, you know, sisterly bond and she's so awesome. And she always held, you know, UPA does the bringing sexy back, um, month, right? Yeah. I think it's in July. So it must I be coming so. soon. Yeah. 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 And um, they do the showcase out at brass rings in Chicago usually, right? Yeah. And that whole month is just so exciting. I just love seeing everyone's videos and hot pictures and I love it. Um, 
so yeah, Lucky, uh, in honor of that, was holding like our her own little mini kind of. She called it Freestyle Fridays, and she had like a bringing sexy back edition. So everyone just picked a song. Um, it was just maybe 10, 15 people and just kind of there were no rules. Just do whatever you want. And it's just like our own little kind of sexy show and um, re-record, you know, all the videos and put them online. We put them on like a private page. So not just any person can go look at it. <laughs> but um, that one, you know, when you feel a song and it just yeah. kind of like happens and that's what happened. And I just had so much fun doing that routine. And I just felt so comfortable with the people that I was around. I wasn't really worried about, you know, being overly sexy or not being too sexy, but it just kind of worked And the kind of like sexy style that I like. I like to do a very playful, you sexy. Do. You're cool. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> it feels like Cause I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a nerd. Like I'm a dork. Like I don't get embarrassed and I'll do anything to make people laugh. So turning that like sexy side on is very hard for me to be like, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and so adding that little bit of like playfulness in there makes, yeah. makes it feel like me and not like I'm trying to be this like overly sexual person, but I've always been a slutty dancer though. Even okay. like, <laughs> so I was on my high school dance team. Right. Okay. And we would have like a, like a spring show at the end of summer or end of spring, duh, Lindsay. And, <laughs> um, they wanted me to choreograph the hip hop routine. So I was like, Okay. And so the Beyonce uh, Crazy in Love song yeah, yeah, yeah. was big. And so, of course, duh, like any person would do, I did like the uh oh, uh oh. And my yeah. mom and dad were just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the TV. That's from the TV. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Beyonce made me do it. <laughs> yeah. So I was already bouncing my butt when I was like 17. Nice. So kept it classy since then. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a, a little bit of ho has always been in me. Fun ho. <laughs> Silly Fun ho. Ho. Yeah. I, I feel like. Play. <laughs> yes. Um, heaven on earth. That's what our past um, podcast oh. guest, Makita, taught me that ho is heaven on earth. Um, so um, if anyone calls you a ho, you say, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah so what i expect from that is like you really be yourself don't try to emulate someone else's sexy style because you could try to be the like licking the paws serious yeah. dancer and you wouldn't feel comfortable but you're sexy right. shit because you're like i know i'm this goofy person and i'm gonna play into that in my in my performances yeah and own it. like figure out what that is about yourself that you're most comfortable being you and like Make that sensual. Make that seductive. Exactly. And, it ta you know, it, I feel like it takes a while to develop yeah. your own personal style. And yeah. so, um, I mean, there's plenty of videos of me out there where it's like, you did what? <laughs> because I didn't find – I haven't found my style yet, yeah. you know. So – a little trial and error. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, because you always hear people say like, oh, I'm not sexy. Oh, I could never do that. I'm not sexy. And it's like, well, we all are inherently sexy. You know, it's you just have to find your own sexy. You, We may not all be, you know, Alethea Austin sexy or, right. you know, what we would perceive as like, oh, that person represents sexy. You know, we all can't be Beyonce or whatever. But yeah, um, but th that's that's what's so great about sexy is that it's so many different personalities to it. Like put your own personality to it. Own it. Totally. Um, have you taken, uh, have you met Ceci at the studio at ATX? Yes. Well, this is a perfect example. She teaches a lyrical pole class. And yep. Lord knows I went and took it, guys. I <gasps> was ridiculous looking. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to go back and watch the security videos. <laughs> it was, I was like, I don't understand what you're doing. Just move on. Don't wait for me. I can't get this. So, But I see some people do lyrical like Sessie. She's so sexy when she dances. So lyrical. Sexy. I look like, I, you know, I have two left feet and I – 
<laughs> don't know what the hell's going on and that I've never danced before or less yet. Like, girl, I'll word, take a sexy, class with but, you and we can be like that together. <laughs> but it's, it's so hard, but it's true because if that was my introduction to sexy and I thought that's what sexy is and I couldn't do it, then I would think, well, I'm not. But right. luckily been take been exposed to a lot of different styles now and I took it and I was proud I took it but yeah. good lord you you people that could do that lyrical praise I do yes. not understand how to get <laughs> that no. cute on me <laughs> <laughs> but she yeah she's a perfect example of a beautifully like I think she's trained in like salsa and Maybe. stuff or tango or something. Um, but she has a beautiful, sexy, lyrical style. That's just amazing. So it's, it's so nice, you know, sexy, like you said, doesn't have to be one certain type of genre of dance. Yeah. I like that. We're talking about this right before the, the bring, bringing sexy back for UPA. And so also I love that idea. I feel like we should challenge people in your studios, like around to maybe like throw these nights, these Breen Sexy Back nights and just a very informal, no stress, just yeah. play music freestyle with like with each other and maybe record it and maybe tag Lindsay and I so we know and try to like make it a thing. That would be really fun because it sounds like you got a lot out of it. I feel like I would love that. Yeah. And it is just so much fun to let loose and dance and just no stress, like wear whatever you want. You can be as dolled up or as, you know, sports bra and, you know, shorts, whatever you want. And it's just so much fun to let loose. Yeah. So do it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you should totally do it. Do it. And freestyling is hard. It's so hard. So hard. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. So it's like a two birds, one stone thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I like, like those classes. A lot of times I'm so tired by the end, but they're, well, the, you know, you're put on a song at the end and it's like freestyle. I know a lot of studios do that. And sometimes yeah. I'm so tired, but I like make myself do it, even though I'm just doing the same four things over and over again. <laughs> Girl, but those four things, you know, are going to look He's real good. It. You got to work it, ladies. One day, yeah. we'll, one day we'll, we'll be as good as Lindsay. You've you also know? done. Or are, <laughs> we'll be as good as ourselves. Yeah. Because we don't compare ourselves to others. But maybe yeah. as comfortable and find our own style as Lindsay has. How about that? Yeah, just be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. I feel like a rainbow needs to go by. Yeah. <laughs> I just have like, be yourself. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get my graphics person right on that. Yeah. Just kidding. My cat doesn't know how to do that. So it's not, not going to happen. Get a job, <laughs> That's my cat. Intern, is my cat. Yeah. <laughs> like for speaking of, you did um, Miss Pole Dance America and you did like a Disney uh, thing. And I'm not always into the Disney. I'm going to throw that out there. I don't know if you knew that about me. And uh, I hope you don't judge me. I don't. Or look I less of me, you but it's just not. Are. Yeah, it's just not my thing. But I saw your Disney routine at Miss Planet's America. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. She did this right. Like, this worked. <laughs> <laughs> I did Disney. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, and you, d you did it some justice. And so <laughs> I think this was when I noticed when you danced, like, you – you being comfortable in yourself, you were so comfortable with the audience. You like eye contact and smile the whole time. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, Miss Pole Dance America was like the highlight of my pole career. Yeah. Like it was just being like affiliated with Miss Pole Dance America. I have such respect for Alethea and that whole, you know, the Chrome Bar, Miss Pole Dance America, that whole thing. I think she's wonderful. And so if I got out there and I'm like, if I bust and fall on my face, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just going to smile and laugh it off and whatever. But just being able to step onto that stage was a big deal to me. And so, um, I love Disney. Obvi. Um, I, al <laughs> <laughs> I always have, that's just something that's always been really special. To me, um, you got engaged at Disney. I Land, did. Disney World, one of the Disney's. I, I did. I was on vacation with my whole family and uh, my boyfriend at the time, Bryce, perform or performed what? <laughs> Proposed. <laughs> kind of awesome. a performance. He's yeah. been in one of my performances. I forced him Has to be. He? 
Yeah, he was, I was a mermaid and he was my sailor because I couldn't, I did a leer and pole routine, but I couldn't like walk on the stage because I was in a mermaid tail. So I made him carry me. (laughs) That's so cute. Oh, hey Bryce. I was like, you're a keeper. <laughs> yeah. You, you propose to me at Disney World, please? Disney World yeah. or Disneyland did he propose? I, Disney Disney World. Disney World. Okay, that's the one in Florida. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, and so uh, Disney, that's something that's been always, you know, near and dear to me. And with Miss Pole Dance America, that whole competition is about, you know, the show and not about, you know, what – tricks are the craziest or whatever they want to see entertainment. And I feel that when a performer can step on stage and make eye contact with the audience and just kind of be like in their, in their face, pretty much, Mm -hmm. I think that's very captivating. And I think that's one of the elements that creates a great, memorable, entertaining performance. I wasn't going to win. I wasn't going to do whatever. I just wanted to entertain the masses <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, put the link- in Disney. <laughs> yeah it worked I'll put a link to it in the show notes so people can check it out so you know I mentioned Sydney before who uh, we spoke about you on her podcast and I had reached out to her in to see if she had any questions for you and she had a great one and she wanted to know um how come you decided ultimately to stay local rather than going and doing like the world tour which a lot of people think that you have to do if you're like a pole professional yeah. so was that ever even an option for you or and great question Sid thanks yeah that is a really 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 good question um I think it's totally awesome that for pole professionals <laughs> and uh for people to go and travel the world and go tour and you know I think it's a great opportunity to really get yourself out there and meet a whole bunch of people and network and totally awesome um I feel like I have such a strong connection with the girls here in Austin. Like I've been to, I've worked at a few different studios and I've had, you know, the same group of people kind of follow me from one to the next to the next. So I feel that I care about them so much. I want to give them kind of all of my passion. And that's, that sounds really shitty, but I don't mean it like that. Like I'm just so invested in them and I know they rely on me as well. And that sounds really like diva and like big headed, but I don't mean it like that. (laughs) But it's like, I like seeing them grow every day. I like hearing about their day. I like, you know, being, you know, just a phone call away, but, um, I have thought about going out and traveling and doing all that. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it's for me. I feel like I'm, I like, I like, I'm a creature of habit. I like doing the same things kind of every day. And I feel that, I don't know. I feel like just here in Austin, I'm in my own element. And if people come in from out of town and can come to the studio that I'm at, they can really get like a good sense of what we're here about, like in Austin and what I'm about and what great instructors we have and what a great like student base that we have. And I don't know. I don't know. Like I've never really like X'd it out, but, and, and I'm kind of nervous too. Like, I'm nervous about, like, people signing up for work. Like, I'm being real here. Like, <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous, like, about people signing up for workshops. Like, I'm nervous that I won't have any people come and take workshops. And then I'll be like, I'm here in Germany by myself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a legit know I mean? thing to be scared about. I mean, these are the legit things that these – these folks that are traveling for as the professionals deal with. It's like, shit, I just booked a flight to this country and they had to cancel this workshop because it didn't get enough people. And it's, it's a gamble a lot. And yeah, it's scary, man. It is. But, um, I mean, I think it would be such an awesome opportunity to at least, you know, do, do it like locally here in the States, you know what I mean? Like, I think that would be super, super, super fun. Um, but I just haven't been able, I just haven't had that opportunity okay. yet. Okay. So it, it's, it, it's a potential, but it sounds like you're just fulfilled being local. 
Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm really, I'm just really happy with life and I'm really content with life. And I think that transfers through your classes. Um, Mm -hmm. If I was, you know, traveling, 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 and I didn't get any sleep and I haven't eaten now, I have to go teach this class. I don't want them getting a bad taste in their mouth from me because I'm hangry. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like I couldn't be my best. And that's the only thing I want to give people. Did that sound too beauty, beauty pageant? Not at all. (laughs) No, I mean, it was kind of, you know, I've presented it as a beauty pageant question in a way. So, I mean. World peace. You you got, (laughs) I just want everyone to be happy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, not at all. It's like, I see it that how you, because putting together what you said before, like, you're just fucking happy doing doing pole like at your expert professional level, but not full time. Like people, we don't, people don't talk about that. You know, there's this kind of underlying current with things right now, not just in pole, but everything that if this is your, your passion, it needs to be your career. And that's not always the case. Like, yeah. And I feel like almost like, Oh, you're not, you, yeah, you don't take poll seriously because you don't, you don't travel and you don't post everything that you do on Instagram. And I see all these people, you know, with a hundred thousand followers plus or 10,000 followers or whatever. I'm like, bitch, I don't even have 4,000 followers. (laughs) Like, Like, I'm just. I don't know. There's this kind of underlying judgment that I don't get out and just kind of throw myself out for everyone to step into my life. You know what I mean? And it's funny if that what came from anyone, it would just be yourself because I don't think anyone else would put those expectations on you. I, I told you before, I think it's cool that you do it your own way and that you're so to me, I, you know, you're a pole professional. You are. And we'll talk about some other things you do um, in a second, but you can still keep a job and hang out with your husband on the weekends and yeah. still be a really good dancer and like really connect with students and keep things local. That's one thing was a big change moving. Um, let's make this about me for a second. <laughs> just no, just moving from LA to Austin. I really like it here because um, not that, I mean, I love LA for what it is as well, but it's a lot of, it's a lot less pole professionals, here teaching the classes Mm -hmm. and so they're not traveling as much or it's not so much of a pressure on them that which I can sense as a student in the class like oh my god I can tell she's struggling right now this is like her 15th class this week or whatever you know so yeah um I like the small pole communities it's cool yeah I like it here do you see a big difference between the pole community in LA and then here? Yeah, I do. And I've said that um, to people offline, but I'll talk about it here. Um, I think the teachers are way more focused here because the, because in LA they have so much more to focus on because a lot of the teachers there, it's just a place where you move to to be a pole professional. So they have yeah. 85 things on their plate in a day. And, you know, if it is a 20th class or if it is like, okay, well, I have to go film this video after this, or I have to go fly yeah. to this after this, you're getting um, a lot less focus. Um, but I will say from the other perspective, LA, I think, is a lot less conservative, which I found is a huge shock coming here, is that it is a smaller town, so it's not so much variety and maybe like the uh, the non-pole fitness classes. So yeah. every city offers its different things. Um, For sure. And that's why I feel lucky to have lived in two of them while playing. Yeah. You know, each city, you know, in, in New York, I'm sure it's completely different. And oh, we talked sure. to Shay Williamson and she's in in Utah and it's completely different there. So it's kind of cool to be able to talk to different people and find out what's going on. Like yeah. even in Australia or, you know, they have their own thing going. So Yeah, definitely. Um yeah, one thing I noticed when I was in um LA a few months ago, I heard other pole dancers talking about, oh, this audition I'm going to and this audition for this. And I'm just like, I don't know what that world is like. You know what I mean? I was go-go dancing at night at the bar, but I knew I had the gig. So yeah, but it's like go-go dancing at the bar in Austin is like (laughs) 
the highest like form of entertainment, which kind of sounds weird, but like going to LA, like it's like, this really is the land of like, music videos and TV and movies and auditions for this and this and this and this artist. I'm like, that's cool. But it's just, you know, something that I'm so not used to. Yeah, we've had a lot of people on the podcast and have been able to talk up to them about that. Even the first podcast with Candace Kane, like she's lives that life in LA and it's mm-hmm. so fascinating. It's so cool. Yeah, and it's, not, and you and it's cool. And if you want to do that, probably don't move to Austin. I don't know. I don't know how many music videos they film here, but yeah. you know, think about like the the advantages of living in a smaller city or a smaller town is like you can create this other thing. So it's not all about you know. There's only one way to do it. Yeah, and I mean, there's opportunities here in Austin, but I feel like it's a little sketchy almost. It's oh, yeah. like. <laughs> There's so many like, and I mean, I'm sure LA and New York and whoever has this too, (laughs) but it's like, I feel in those big cities that there's more like legit artists and not like, hey, you want to dance on a pole for $25 for five (laughs) hours of work and you have to do your own hair and makeup and oh yeah, it's not a real pole type of thing, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, it's like, you should just find a friend to do that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But it's cool because people can um, back to the. This was the, the that was the worst sequitur ever. But I remembered something else I wanted to talk about, which was <laughs> whatever. I'm not what a professional, abs. you guys. This isn't my job either. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretend to be professional at talking. Yeah. I'm terrible, but um, no, we're you, like legit friends. So we yeah. go, we go off. <laughs> We're just talking about whatever. See, yeah. thank you kids, for thanks for saving me, bud. Um, but people can take lessons with you, even if they're not in Austin, because you do one of your pole professional jobs is with Cleo Rock and Pole. Yeah, and that's why you were in LA a few weeks ago. It's true, oh, Cleo, my love. I love her. I love that woman so much. Yes, Cleo, the hurricane. Um, Let's talk about stalking here. Like, <laughs> Let's for keep real. talking about stalking since Let's we've already just, been. Yeah. This is kind of the theme. Let's just keep going with it. Um, I stalked Cleo's entire life, like from the moment she became Cleo the Hurricane until now. Like, I still stalk her. Um, but yeah, she runs um, an online website with tutorials, conditioning, flexibility, um, online downloads, not to mention like her kick ass merch retail store. Um, and so I was lucky enough to be featured on her website as one of the instructors. Um, so I have a gag gaggle, a gaggle of tutorials. <laughs> um, <laughs> and as well as um, what is more than one tutorial? Is it a herd? <laughs> Is it a bunch? No, it's a gaggle. Oh, okay. Gaggle. Gaggle of <laughs> tutorials. Okay. And she's just created this amazing online community um, to where you can subscribe to her website and see tutorials from myself, as you mentioned, uh, Candace Kane, um, Amy Henderson, Jordan Kinsley, a bunch of awesome, awesome, awesome pole dancers. Um, and so I was obsessed obsessed with Cleo the Hurricane. I mean, I still am, but like sickeningly obsessed (laughs) with her. I would watch every video a million times. I went to every workshop. I commented on every photo, liked every photo. Like, can I keep your hair and wear your skin? Like, (laughs) and I think I just stalked her so much. She was like, all right, come on. <laughs> Do a job. Do a job. Yes. I'll just pay you now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to give Cleo the credit. She actually is the one who came up with my Miss Pole Dance America Disney routine. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, she came up with the theme for it. So I was like, oh, yeah, you get me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was out there a couple months ago shooting a handful of tutorials, and I think I'm about to go back out there again soon to do some more nice so yeah people can go on on cleo's i'll put a link to it um yes for some reason someone can't google cleo's but (laughs) yes it's cleo's rock and pole.com yeah yeah so people can take classes at that with you on that um if they're interested in in seeing what you got now that i've 
built you up so much. Are you doing the uh, rock and pole high school thing? I'm not this okay. year. Okay. Um, it's going to be on the Queen Mary. It's Rock and Pole High School in July. Um, there's going to be a ton of instructors, a lot of local instructors like Jordan Kinsley and Tiffany Rose. Um, and then there's going to be Jetta Jordan and Blue Phoenix and some pole dancers from across the pond. Well, that's England, isn't it? It is, but... Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Eh. There's some, there's <laughs> a bunch of water between us, so <laughs> yeah. I mean Australia down under. Yeah. Um, yeah, lots of lots of amazing instructors, and it's going to be a sleepover, and there's going to be a prom and spiked punch, and um, you may be, be able to see some ghosts on the Queen Mary that scares the living daylights Have out of me. Have you been on the Queen Mary? No, I haven't. I've always wanted to go to Ink and Iron. Yeah, Ink and Iron. They always had Ink and Iron on the on the Queen Mary, and it's like this old ship, and it definitely has ghosts on it. Yeah, it's like one of the most top ten like haunted places like in the United States. I feel like I don't know if Cleo's capitalizing on that. Is she getting like the the, the ghost hunter pole demographic with that, or is she just getting the yeah. rock and roller? So I don't know, guys, yeah. if you didn't know about this. <laughs> Yeah, if you're into pole dancing and ghosts, there you go. Why not? <laughs> Paranormal. But it's going to be such a cool, cool adventure. Yeah. And I'm sad to miss it, but hopefully I'll be there next year. Yeah, I know. Me too. It sounds really fun. I think if I still lived in L.A., I would have figured out a way to make it happen. But um, guys, post a lot of pictures. We want to see about it because it sounds really fun. Yeah, it's like three videos days or pictures. something. And yeah, there's just like a lot of workshops and events. And so, um, yeah, I'll put a link. She's not yes. sponsoring this or anything. I just think it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, no one pays for anything yeah. on this podcast ever. So um, <laughs> I just think it's cool and people should go because I think it would be cool to see more successful um, events like that. So Yeah, definitely. And you get like a cool little package when you sign up. I think you get a pair of like uh, Tiffany Hayden's glitter heels. Oh. And yeah, just a bunch of cool stuff and a ton of workshops and a good time. Yes. Videos, pictures. We want to yes. live through you. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, okay, we know you want to do that next year. Mm -hmm. What else? What are your trajectories moving forward? Any, any fun poll stuff that you want that you're hoping to achieve or you just feel like you're at a good place? Right at this moment, I'm at a great place, but in the future, I would like to do one more competition okay. and just kind of have that be my like kind of last competition hurrah because it's a lot of work, okay. like a lot of, you know, a lot of training, costumes, travel, like not just the stress and anxiety of it all. And I kind of want to do one more um, just to do it. And do you then, have your eye on a specific one or? Um, I've heard a lot of great things about um, PSO. Okay. And. We love PSO. On the yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I thought yeah, about there doing. There wasn't like, one where you're like, I want to travel to, you know, Spain you know, and do Alex's poll. You know what would theater. be a cool one to do? Uh, the competition at Pole Expo. Yeah, that would be a cool one. Oh, my goodness. Because I feel like it's, very, it's a little more kind of wilding out than the other yeah. ones, I feel. And it's Vegas. It's Pole Expo. Like, Yeah. And there's a lot of people there. And, so, and then yeah. you can just, like, hang. And then it's usually in the beginning. So then you can just, like, get drunk by the pool afterwards yeah. and for, like, the rest of the two or three days. That's what I did last year. <laughs> but yeah, I think that would be a fun one, but I don't have my mind set on like one specific okay. one. You'll but know. then, yeah, I'll know. And then um, I'm going to, um, we're going to start pop, trying to pop out a kid here. Not too terribly long. That's so exciting. Yeah. So I feel like there's been a lot of kind of pregnant pole dancers. I feel yeah. like a lot of yeah. people are either yeah. pregnant right now or just had a baby. So I feel like it's like I can do it. <laughs> yeah. The, the owner of the studio you teach at Stacy ATX pole, she's pregnant right now. And, um, it's, she's still going 
Yeah, she pole danced all through her first one. She was wow. still, she, bitch was still doing an Iron X at like eight months pregnant. And when I say bitch, I mean that in the most like loving and daring way. It, you and meant then, it like bitch, bitch, not like bitch. You know? yeah. 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 It was just like, man, that's awesome. And so she's still doing it through the second one too. And I'm like, man, mom goals. Yeah, look at Cleo. She came back. Yeah. God, yeah, th- that was like, I remember seeing her on like E! News and like that whole <laughs> thing just kind of blew up. Yeah. It was yeah. cool though, but I'm like, that's my friend slash my boss slash my idol. <laughs> <laughs> All wrapped in one. It's yeah. Such, she's, yeah, and proven that you can be the, a pole mama. So yeah. you're following in her footsteps there too. Yes. <laughs> oh, so exciting for you. Let's go into the second part. Okay. Of the questions I ask everyone, and maybe we already answered this, maybe not, but who is your pole crush? Let me get out my list. Okay. okay. We know Cleo's one of them. She will always and forever be like my first love type okay. of thing. Okay. Um, obsessed with Sarah Jade. Yeah, yeah. Join Her, the club. Oh, jo- yeah, for real. It's a huge club. <laughs> she is so flexible, so talented, so sexy. And I just feel like we're friends, but she just doesn't know. <laughs> and she's really nice too. And I told you actually, I came back after meeting her and I said that you guys remind me of each other. So, and I nearly threw up every day. Yeah. When you said that. <laughs> You're both like self admitted, nerdy, but really cool and sexy and sweet and amazing pole dancers. So, you guys are oh. like kindred spirits in that respect. Sarah J, do you hear that? <laughs> we just became best friends. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, I also, again, another huge club, Olga Coda. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, her style is just so unique and just so dynamic. And I just love her. And she was one person at a uh, pole expo. When I went in this past September, I was just like, <gasps> There's Olga Coda. Don't say anything. Don't make eye contact because you'll just start sweating profusely. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I hear she's very nice too. So I'm sure you could have given her like one of your sassy winks and she would have been. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's what I've heard too. I mean, it makes me so happy when you hear people, people are nice, you know, I feel like we all are though. Yeah. Like it's nice to be part of an industry that for the most part, people are supportive and kind to each other because that's not true in all industries. So, yeah. yeah. And then um, I also love, and I had to say that at the top of my lungs to you <laughs> for some reason, and now I'm embarrassed. Um, I love Daniel Rosen. Yeah, you just turned me on to him. I did. I love him. I find him hilarious. And He's I from love England. Is yes. England? Okay. And I love just all of his little, I love all of his little pole combinations and he just makes me happy. So he's a crush to me too. <laughs> and he's probably going to think I'm weird because he's another one that I like, like every status. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that he likes all of your stuff too. You just don't post as much, but that's okay. We spoke about I need that to be before. Better. It's okay. Well, we like seeing you, but we're not holding it to something that you need to do. You do you. It's your account, not ours. But um, <laughs> I did after you after you told me about him, I did go on his account, and he is very funny. So yeah, um, and oh, and he is a good dancer too. So that yeah, and oh, that. yeah. That's true. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of good dancers. To me, I'm kind yeah. of simple minded. So when someone has more of like a um, can bring a lot of personality or something unique to their dance, that's what really stands out to me. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not so much noticing the nuances because I'm not a trained dancer, but you know, that's not what we're about here. So yeah. <laughs> keep it, it real. You, I'm going to keep it real. Um, <laughs> how would you like to see the pole community evolve over the next five years? Oh man, that is, that one's a tough one. Um, I just, my just main hope and dream is that pole doesn't die out. You know, you know how things kind of like hot, like workout fads kind of like come and like Tybo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Tybo now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I just hope it doesn't go away. That's it. Wherever, whatever, 
Yeah, and I feel like whatever direction poll goes, I feel I feel like there's going to be 10 billion different directions. Mm. And we're all going to be happy no matter what direction we go. But I just want the community just to still stay strong yeah. and just keep kicking ass like we have been. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Keep being cool even if we divide in different areas. Keep being, like, nice and supportive like – we said we noticed before. I'm I'm adding on to your answer. I'm sorry. Yeah, do question. it. No, I was do thinking, it. That was your question, not mine. No, but. do it. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, that too. Um, okay, so did I touch on anything? Do you have anything coming up um, to share with our audience? We said to check you out on Cleo's and um, – that I'm going to put all your social media links. So I think you, and the compet- your your sign off competition, your going away tour. Yeah, <laughs> the final show. Your Molly <laughs> Crew tour, final tour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hasn't happened yet so we'll have to just follow you to find out when that when that occurs find out (laughs) well then before i let you go can you leave us with an empowering message or quote or just something fun to sign off with oh yeah here's my dog begging can you see him (gasps) hi Hi. He like, says, hey. Can you, can you be done already, Ma? Yeah. Come He's on. like, love me, please. Um, <laughs> I, in one of my idols is RuPaul. And I always watch RuPaul's Drag Race, and so does my husband. He's going to hate me for outing his guilty pleasure, but he loves Drag Race. <laughs> and at the end of Drag Race, RuPaul says, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And I'm like, that is such a good, so true. So that's mine. In the words of RuPaul, had, ha, wait, if you don't love yourself, <laughs> how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And then she goes, <laughs> can I get an amen? And everyone goes, amen. amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely embody that. Thank you for, um, thank you for sharing that. I 100% agree. Um, and thank you for taking the time to chat and for being on the podcast and for becoming my friend in Austin. Yeah. Well, thanks for moving to Austin and thanks for having me. I'm th- this has been so cool and hopefully I didn't say too much stupid stuff. <laughs> you are fabulous, darling. I will always out stupefy anyone on this podcast. Don't you worry. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Pole Parlor podcast. Want more? Visit poleparlor.com for show notes and to link to the Facebook group where you can connect with other poleaholics and continue the conversation. Listen to past episodes and subscribe to new episodes on the website, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. Lots of love, babes. Thanks for listening.